Tonight's wild camp is up Cat Bells. We're going to find somewhere not camped before. We'll have a look and see what we can find. Welcome to Lost in the Lakes, where you get bruised reviews. Best of all, views. So this was a bit of a spur of a moment thing. Um, I was actually going to uh, camp somewhere else, but um, I have got sore legs. Um, so what's, when I did the uh, walk up Raven Crag, um, I ran down and me being me, I just kept on going all the way down. Uh, thankfully I had the sticks, but my legs are absolutely killing after that. I don't really run that much and when I do I just take it too far. So we're going up a short one, we're going up Cat Bells and we're going to try and find somewhere a little bit different to camp than the usual place that I did last time. Right, so we've gone up the first scramble, just having a quick look around. There's a couple of places here but uh, they're too close to the path for my liking. Going to get a few people passing here. When I'm talking to the camera, when I'm in the tent, it's going to sound a bit weird. So I'm going to keep on going up, probably go up over the top and uh, find a little spot. There's a spot where I camped last time, which I know can be done, but uh, I'm going to try and have a look, see if there's anything else a little bit further down on the far side there. Okay, we've come up to the top of Cat Bells and uh, the wind's picking up now and we've got some nice weather that way but the weather that's coming is that stuff so not entirely sure what what's going on but it's a fairly bit windy here so i think we're going to drop down just a little bit uh, the place where i chose last time it's going to be quite exposed um, albeit i think it's going to be dry so I think we'll be all right if I do pitch my tent there. But um, I'm going to see if I can find something a little bit further down, a little bit further on, and a different place as well. Something just a bit off the path, because uh, this time of year, there's going to be quite a few people coming up. And uh, I want a good night's sleep. Right, I've found somewhere. You can see it's kind of sort of flat area but i think if i pitch it trouble is and look the perfect pitch is putting the tent to the back into the wind i know it's a strong tent and everything i suppose maybe it's a good one to test it i'll check the wind speeds tonight in fact last week i was going on about my anemometer I've never even used it because there was no wind so Now's uh, probably a good one. Right, let me guess. I reckon 20 gusting at 30. So I'll get it out and we'll try it and see what happens. Right, it just shows you, what did I say? Gusting at 30. So it looks like, looks like the batteries are low. <laughs> Great start. Um, so that bit there, I would have guessed 25, but it's 18 miles an hour. Right, there we go. Just hold it up a little bit further. So, the highest gusts are probably about 20 miles an hour at the moment. I'll save the battery on that. See if the winds get up later in fact i'll check the forecast i haven't checked the forecast yet so uh, before i even pitch the tent i'm going to check the forecast and make sure that uh... okay it doesn't look that bad without the glasses on it looked like there was a thunderstorm coming in but we've still got a bit of a wind so i'll uh, see how it is in the wind it's going to be a weird one having people walking up past me all the time while i'm pitching my tent i'm not used to it so uh, I'll do your little tent laps and uh, oh look the clouds, the sun's coming out, how wonderful. 
Right, let's get going. I think this is the first time I've pitched a tent with a t-shirt on this year. Right, there's the pitch. Now, because of the wind and everything, I've had to put my tent this way, so I'm kind of looking out towards there. Yeah, I mean, if I sit back in here, then and look that way, so um, it, it, it does slope up a little bit that way, so I'll probably be sleeping that way as well. And this is where I am. Top's just up there, that group of six people that just went past. Um, I'm just sort of on the top there now. Still got my bag and everything to offload. But we can come and have a sit over here. And stare at Borrowdale. So you've got basically the whole of Derwent water that you can see. And can you see why Borrowdale is so attractive? Why so many people come to visit it? I mean, obviously, Cameron never does any justice, but it's still fantastic. Clouds are higher than, way higher than uh, 3,000 foot. The top of Skid is just over there. And uh, last week we were camping and the clouds were just scooting over the top of Suterfell which is just poking out at the side there of Blencathra. Um, probably about the same height as, uh, as Latrig. And then just up there, the week before that was Lon Lonsgale. And that was the higher one. Now I've kept low again today because of the wind, um, but I wanted to come and do cat bells for one last time this season because it's going to start getting busy. And there's my little pitch. Right, I'm going to get everything in the tent, get settled in, and I'll see you in a minute. The wind just picked right up and I just quickly put my shoes on. I was going to go and measure the wind speed and then it just dropped. And it's breezy now, but it got really, got really gusty, so uh, pop out, see what it's like. Oh. Tell you what, we'll go up over the top there and see what it's like. So what we got, constant sort of 15, 16, Okay, so we've got 19 mile an hour winds. Seems to be quite constant at that speed. So we can say 20. And then obviously the gusts, probably 25, something like that. Good thing is the temperature's up. Okay. Yeah, so the gusts, gusting at probably 25 mile an hour. And we've got the tent sideways to the wind. I'll just show you. There's the tent down there. So the wind is pretty much straight at my back now. So it's hitting this sort of back side corner here. Um, I'm pretty happy with where it's at. Although it's uh, moving around, I think it's going to stay uh, quite sturdy for tonight. And I do believe the wind's going to drop a little bit. So um, this is going to be the sort of strongest wind. I'm going to go back in the tent, double check, make sure I know what the wind speed's going to be like. And everything should be fine. 
solid here because the wind's pushing kind of on that back there and then must be bouncing off there and making this all flappy. So uh, I might tighten it up. We can still, I've tightened it up on these ones, but I might tighten it up on uh, here, just put it on a, taut, a tighter pitch. So I haven't brought any breakfast because I was just going to do a really short one. So I hope this chicken curry uh, is filling, but if not, as a backup, I've got another fire pot uh, beef stew. So it's quite uh, breakfasty, like stewy. So um, I think if I'm still hungry later on, I might that have that as a late um, a late tea, um, or even for breakfast in the morning. See how I feel. I've also got the platypus full of water. Got our spoons. And this week we've got, um, what's this? Two different ones, so we can try them both. Both Nest Cafe, but I do prefer these packets. They're just easier to deal with than these ones. And, Got a different mug. Got a Fjall Raven mug. They just, I think these just clean up a bit easier, you know, when you swill them out. The um, the other one I had, um, the titanium, I know these are heavier, but um, it just, I don't know why they don't make them out of, you see, you've got this titanium, like, smooth titanium there and then you've got this stuff here I don't know why like this one is it's anodized why don't they just make it nice and smooth so it's easy to clean but anyway rant over I've got this now my Fjall Raven mug and for cooking you still haven't got a um, a windshield for the uh, for the other cooking stuff so we're back with the ever faithful MSR wind burner. Right I've just come out to see how windy it is. It's looking like it's gonna be sort of 20 mile an hour. So I'm just gonna come up to the path and have a little walk along the top there. It's obviously a bit windier over here. So I'm uh, Glad I camped down there actually. It's just out of the wind. Knocks about maybe five mile an hour off. When you get on this edge here, it's uh, blowing an absolute gale. Looks like someone's pitching a tent up near the top there. Either that or in a bothy, one or the other. Got a couple of dogs. Looks like the weather's gonna change. We had lovely, Blue skies, look at that, that looks really nice. You know, that's summertime. And then that's what we've got coming. I'm glad I've seen that actually, so I know uh, what to expect in about probably 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. But for now, we're gonna enjoy these views. I know I don't come across on the videos how much I appreciate this stuff, but I really do. And actually to live here as well, it's just, uh, an extra bonus. I can just come out on a weekend, you know, 20 minutes and I'm up here. So obviously tents just down there. If you can see it right about there. So we've got high style and uh, Heinz Gaff just there. This is uh, Robinson. If we just pop up over the top here, probably see some places where I've stopped. Right opposite here, you've got Rolling End, and then just higher up on the right, you've got Barafel, just in the distance there, that little bit there, just before it gets into the woods, you've got, uh, it's actually called Heavy Sides, but it's part of Grisdale, Grisdale Pike, which is in the clouds now. And before we were looking at Helvellyn and Skidder and 
they were in the clouds at all realized how uh, how much you can actually see my tent so all the way up there from the top i'm just pitched out but i'm glad it's a green tent that you can't see it this is one of the reasons why people have green tents in the lake district so uh you know it's just kind of there to be honest if you weren't looking for it you probably couldn't see it whereas if you got bothies which are a different uh, kettle of fish you know you want bright orange for that because you want really you want people to find out to find where you are right i thought i'd come back up to the top here just to get a last view oh, it's a funny one this because the actual well I don't, I don't think it's a trick point i think it's just a point <laughs> It's lower than the summit. You know, the actual summit is is this little. Well, don't know what would be the highest point there. Right there, and that's your little sort of viewpoint that shows you the fells around and what they are. But it's actually a nice little place it's here because usually you can hide out of the wind and. Uh, you can look at all the fells if you can read them. And it just shows you all the angles of all the fells. And you can look out and see most of them. I don't know how long this has been here, but it certainly hasn't been here since Poppy Day, Remembrance Sunday. But uh, I'm sure the weather's pushed it off. Right, let's have a let's have a little look now. I think when I came up here it seemed pretty tidy. Now Cat Bells is one of those busy fells that get dirty and people leave loads of crap around. And it's usually this side. People tend to sort of come out of the wind and but it does actually seem a lot cleaner than it normally is. What I'll do is I'll come off a lot of tra off the trail and have a look and see what we can find. Right, I mean there's this cardboard thing here. Uh, oh, here we go. What bottle? That's uh, either been thrown off the top or blown off the top. But as it has been that blustery, I would imagine that's probably just been thrown off the top there or just left um tissue down there so i mean compared to raven crag i mean it's relatively clean but i do know that you know people come up here quite regularly and clean the spot but they do miss this side of the fell because Again, you know, it's the prevailing winds. And when you're looking around here, you do find stuff that's kind of blown off or thrown off. Let's have a little look over here. See what we got. You can see how windy it is. See my tent just over there, about there. And I think tomorrow I might take a little beeline down one of these sheep tracks if it's not raining. If it's raining, I think we'll come back over the top and go down the main route. But uh, other, if not, I think we might take a track down here come off and then there's a path that goes down and then we meet the uh, this section here that, that little bit there that goes around the uh, side of the fell right I'm gonna go up to that uh, water bottle and grab it and I'll carry that back right it looks like the clouds are gonna stay hopefully at this level so higher than what we are still skirting across the tops there of um, skidder little man so 2500 something like that 
You've got Lonsdale, which is 2,300. And obviously the top of Blees there, which is 2,600, 700-ish. So, uh, yeah. And again, even, um, even up at the top of, uh, oh, what's it called now? Carlside. So even at the top of Carlside there, you've got clear. So it's just the higher fells. Dalehead, one of the higher fells. And over there, Red Pike, again, one of the higher fells. Well, what I'm thinking is, I think it's, it's hitting that fell and, and getting pushed up mostly by the wind. So it's probably lower that side, but it's all going over towards Skidder from, from the south, almost like north, uh, south to north. Okay, right. I'm going to head off back to the tent and have some lunch. I'm going to pop down now. Oh, speaking of rubbish, here we go. Someone's left a hat or a fat man's cardigan sleeve. Right, okay, I'm going to head off down here now and go off back to the tent, which is just over there. Well, it turns out the wind out there now is 30 mile an hour supposed to drop at about now but it's not so I've just been out with the uh, windometer thing but it's too dark to film um, yeah so we're now sitting at 30 mile an hour winds but tent is still standing strong but it's getting a bit cold so I'm gonna get some tea on and um, have something to eat and get warm. No, I didn't film this last time but uh, I've gone for the beef stew again. So this one you can just see in there, get the light in there. And it takes two what was it 280 280 millilitres of water. You can actually see how dry it is, you know sort of dry beef stew. Right, I'll show you what it's like when it's got water in it. Cooking done. We've got that sitting for 15 minutes. It's a lot quicker and a uh, lot slower than these. Things. I'm pretty sure these say, uh, yeah, so these are eight minutes. Does that mean these are drier? I don't know. Anyway, I've got this brew to enjoy. So I think one of the problems with these fire pot things, because they take so long to um, to get ready, 15 minutes, what happens is they cool down, especially if you're in cold environments. So imagine you're out in the snow and it's like minus two or something. In 15 minutes, this thing's gonna lose it all heat. So it's not gonna stew. Um, this is a beef stew. Oh, it does taste nice. So, I think maybe this this is what what's going wrong with fire pot. Why people don't really rate them as much. Don't know why they put the price up. It used to be, you know, get fire pot because they're cheaper. It used to be six pound fifty, but for some reason, um, nine pound fifty. Adventure food, seven pound fifty. Eight minutes to heat um, till it's ready, and these are a lot more tastier. So I think, on the grand scheme of it, Adventure Food have probably got the um, the best rating, to be honest, because you know you've got your real term, that's the stuff like that. And to be honest, because they're only a couple of quid more than that, that's worth it. But I think Fire Pot, I've got. A, Need to book their ideas up. Recommended D of E kit. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, this will be the last one I buy. Well, it's five o'clock. I'm up early because uh, didn't really sleep much last night. It got really windy. It must be. Oh, like this tent was really shaking. Um, but about four o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, everything died off. So I didn't really sleep much, so I'm up now. 
thought I might as well get some breakfast and uh, get off the fell. But have a look at the view. Right, so I think I've already said before that it's, it's half four, half five now. And I'm getting up early because it's a busy mountain. There's already been two people past. There's one person on the top. Um, and I think the wind's going to pick up as well. Again. So I'm going to have a brew. And um, chill out for a minute get packed up I'm gonna go down I think we'll go down the back side of the mountain um, purely because um, Hawes Gill Hawes Hawes Gate is it Hawes Gate? I can't remember yeah Hawes Gate Hawes Gate Coal and go off that way it's just easier and uh, I'm packed off of the back side of the mountain there as well so Hello, the Nemo Philo Elite. Um, bought it on a whim, I wasn't sure what pillow to get. But I think as far as pillow's concerned, it's quite comfy considering it, it goes down into next to nothing. It's, uh, this is what I like to do, sort of kind of get the bruise on and stuff and start packing away as you're doing it. Uh, seems more efficient that way as long as you keep an eye on your water boiling and uh, don't knock it over I think I might be right ready for another gas bottle now that's my second gas bottle since I've had this uh, I transferred it from my other one um, we're on about 20 meals with two bottles. I think you obviously use more in winter. I think you can average if you're using one of these per dried meal 10 to 12 cooks and, and brews as well. So if you're going away for five days. I think one of these little smaller gas bottles with this wind burner would do. Maybe even up to a week. Probably stretching it because if you if you're making lunches and breakfasts and everything I think five days might uh, after anything after five days might be too much. I'll just show you. So that's the that's the size of the pillow. Which is nothing. That's why I'm, I always take it with me, even even if I don't think I'm going to need it. But um, I've used it most times in winter time um, or colder climates. I usually I've got that, which is my um, I put it in this Osprey bag just because it fits better than the pocket that it's designed to go in. Uh, it's just a down jacket and an Alpine uh, Alp Alp kit. Uh, down jacket and it's one of their lightweight ones it doesn't have a hood or anything but it's good as a backup and it's good um, as a pillow as well you can open it up and put it in a in a bigger you know you could put it in that which is the uh, bag that my um, uh, sleeping bag came in which is the Pipe Dream 400 I think might do like a comparison between this and the OEX. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Put them together. You know, with two new gas bottles. Boil comparison or something like that. Um, to be honest, I think it's a bit of a... Sometimes watch the drill competitions. These guys that, you know, DeWalt drills against Milwaukee drills, if you know your drills. And um, the seconds in it, you know, there's like 
right, let's do this. And there's like half a second in it. And in the grand scheme of it, when you're on a job, what difference does half a second make on a drilling a hole? And I think what they need to focus on really is the sort of longevity. Um, so I think, as far as I'm concerned, Now that's either I call that on camera. That, now that 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 was either boiling because it had frozen, or it was leaking. Stop now. That's interesting. Just about to put the lid on, and I just heard it. Did it again? out that's warm yeah it's wet on the bottom of that crazy I thought the gas was leaking now I think so it's warmed that up and it's started bubbling no it's not that it's red hot or anything I mean warm enough for me to be able to touch it I think the gas inside it had got cold we've been used pretty much like when you get a hairspray and you spray it when it expands it cold it cools cools the gas down is it expansion and contraction kind of like how a heat pump works anyway <coughs> comparisons with these I think the only sort of real world, real world test we all know the speed of these and how quick they are but I think wind wind conditions there's probably not much in it as weight as far as weight's concerned but I think wind and I don't know need to get some sort of controlled wind speed so they're both together and uh, do like a boil test oh, fine. anyway I'm rabbling on um, I'm going to have this brew now and I'm going to start packing away the insides and uh, sort the tent out